But we begin in the NBA in Dallas. A big time trade happened yesterday in the NBA. The Brooklyn Nets traded Kyrie Irving to the Dallas Mavericks. And the Dallas Mavericks, they received Kyrie Irving and forward Marquise Morris. The Nets received Spencer Dinwiddie and Dorian Finney-Smith, a 2029 unprotected first-round pick, also a 2027 and 2029 second-round pick as well. So a big-time trade in the NBA yesterday with the Nets and the Mavericks. So Kyrie Irving is headed to Dallas. So my initial reaction to seeing this trade take place yesterday was the Dallas Mavericks in the short term. In the short term, they improved their basketball team because when they lost Jalen Brunson last year in the offseason to the New York Knicks, they lost someone who could make plays when Luka was on the bench. And that's where the Mavericks have struggled this season so far. When Luka goes to the bench, the Mavericks aren't very good. They're not very good. With Luka on the court, the Mavericks, they had they offensive rating is 118.7. That's the best in the NBA. With Luka off the court, the Mavericks' offensive rating is 106.8. That's the worst in the NBA. So them losing Jalen Brunson in the offseason to free agency, they lost someone who could make plays when Luka was on the bench resting and so forth. So Luka had to play a lot of minutes throughout games. And, you know, the longer the season goes, you get into the postseason. You got Luka playing all these minutes because you can't take him off the floor if you're Jason Kidd. You can't take Luka off the floor if your team is struggling. Now that you bring in a Kyrie Irving, a player who can also create off the dribble, is a one of the best skilled guards ever in NBA history, also a playmaker. I think that helps this Dallas Mavericks team when it comes to being able to leave Luka on the bench for a significant period and you still be able to score points. You still be able to score points. So I thought that was where the Mavericks improved the most with this trade. And offensively, once Luka comes back to the floor, because Kyrie Irving is going to make his debut Wednesday night against the Clippers, once Luka returns back from his injury, Luka and Kyrie offensively will be unstoppable. They are going to be literally unstoppable with Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic on the floor together. I don't see them having any issues whatsoever from an offensive standpoint. I think when you look at the best duos in the Western Conference, I think about the Joker and Jamal Murray. I think about LeBron James and Anthony Davis. I think about also the Clippers with Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. You, you, you got to throw the Dallas Mavericks in the mix now with Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic. I think this is a terrific duo from a scoring perspective. But defensively, the Dallas Mavericks, they did lose a part of their defensive personnel when they traded away Dorian Finney-Smith. Dorian Finney-Smith was their best perimeter defender. And now that you trade him away to the Brooklyn Nets, you give up something defensively. Now, adding Kyrie Irving, maybe Kyrie Irving and his offensive skills can make up for that defensive presence that Finney Smith had on his team. But it is, it is undeniable that trading away Finney Smith defensively, the Mavericks, they lose something on that side of the floor. Now, we know Dorian Finney Smith is not a scoring machine like Kyrie Irving is. But defensively, that's where he has his most impact on this Mavericks basketball team. So as great as the Mavericks are going to be scoring the basketball with Luka and Kyrie, they're going to struggle defensively. Teams are going to be able to score against this Dallas Mavericks basketball team. And as great as you are offensively 
in the playoffs in April, May, and June, the teams who can defend are the teams that usually advance farther in the postseason and in the playoffs. So I like what they were able to add offensively, given the fact they can rest Luka more, and when they put Luka on the bench, offensively they, they won't fall off. They won't have any kind of drop-off from a scoring perspective. But defensively, they are going to struggle. Also, it's going to be adjustment for Luka and Kyrie because both players are used to having the basketball in their hands. So I'm interested to see how Luka does alongside Kyrie when Kyrie has the basketball in his hands. Now, Kyrie doesn't get enough credit for how he's able to perform off the ball. Remember, Kyrie Irving played with LeBron James in Cleveland. So when he was in Cleveland with LeBron, we know LeBron James is a ball-dominant player and Kyrie Irving was still able to perform at a high level when he played alongside Brian in Cleveland. So I think Kyrie doesn't get enough credit for his ability to play off the ball. But Luka, I don't know how Luka is going to transition from having the ball in his hands 100% of the time to having to share the basketball when he's on the floor with Kyrie. That's going to be a major, major adjustment for Luka Doncic. It really, really is. So, again, in the short term, I like this trade for the Mavericks. I believe that the Mavericks are a better basketball team with Kyrie today than they were yesterday without Kyrie Irving. But defensively, they're going to struggle at being able to stop opposing teams. But most of the defensive teams are in the Eastern Conference, the Boston Celtics, the Milwaukee Bucks, the Miami Heat, teams that really, really pride themselves defensively, they're on that side of the, of the conference. So, again, you look at what Kyrie Irving's bringing to the table now that he's in Dallas. That Kyrie Irving this year has 15 30-point games this season. Other players, not named Luka Doncic, they have six 30-point games this season. So, Kyrie Irving instantly is going to bring offense to this team. And I believe that having Jason Kidd in place, that's also going to help this basketball team be able to thrive as well. Because you got Luka and you got Kyrie, and Jason Kidd is one of the greatest point guards in NBA history. Especially a great passing point guard in his prime. So that's something that's going to definitely, definitely help this Dallas Mavericks basketball team. You look at what Luka and Kyrie has been able to do this year. Luka Doncic, the man is averaging 33 points per game on 50% shooting from the floor. Kyrie's averaging 27 points per game on 49% shooting from the floor. And I believe that Kyrie Irving is the most skilled guard in NBA history. I love Allen Iverson. We know Allen Iverson won an NBA MVP. Iverson was a great player in that Philadelphia 76ers organization, and he carried that Philadelphia 76ers team to the NBA Finals the year he won NBA MVP against the Lakers. And Iverson was a great, great player. I mean, the answer was an all-time great. I love AI. Definitely one of the greatest players I've ever seen play basketball. Even Allen Iverson isn't as skilled as Kyrie Irving is. There is not a better finisher at the rim than Kyrie Irving is. Seriously. He finishes at the rim like he's 6'8 or 6'9. That's how great Kyrie Irving is. We know how dynamic of a ball handler Kyrie Irving is. But with all that being said, we all know that from a talent perspective, there is nothing to question when it comes to Kyrie Irving. He's box office. He's very skillful overall as a basketball player. And he's also very, very clutch. As the Golden State Warriors about how clutch Kyrie is, then he back to their finals matchup in 2016 when Kyrie hit that game-winning game seven shot over Kyrie Irving. I mean, over Steph Curry. Ask him, ask the Warriors about how clutch Kyrie is. But 
The problem with Kyrie Irving is whether or not he's going to show up for work. We all know whether it's in a relationship, at your workplace, whatever it is, best ability is availability. And Kyrie Irving has struggled with being available with the Brooklyn Nets. You look at what he's done when he's with the Brooklyn Nets. This is his entire Brooklyn Nets tenure. He played in 156 games. That was the games that he played in. He missed 142 total games. So in totality, that's 298 games total since he's been a member of the Brooklyn Nets. The man played in 156 total games of that 298. If my math is correctly, that's 52% of the games that Kyrie Irving played in while he was a member of the Brooklyn Nets. So that means he missed 48% of the games while he was a Brooklyn Net. And that's my biggest issue with Kyrie Irving. It's not about his ability. It's not about his talent. It's not about whether or not he's going to produce when he plays. The issue is getting this brother to the arena and actually playing basketball. Whether it's because of a vaccine shot, whether it's because of things off the court that Kyrie Irving is dealing with, whatever reason, Kyrie Irving struggles to be consistent at being available. And that's been the biggest issue with Kyrie Irving since he's been a member of the Brooklyn Nets. And you got to remember, Kyrie Irving, this is going to be his fourth basketball team in his career. He wanted to leave Cleveland because he didn't want to play in the shadows of LeBron James. He departs Cleveland, goes to Boston, teams up with a young Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. The Celtics were better without Kyrie Irving because the year he didn't play and he was injured, they took LeBron James seven games in the Eastern Conference Finals. Kyrie Irving returns back to the floor the following year, and the Celtics get beat in the second round against the Milwaukee Bucks with Kyrie Irving. He departs Boston after telling the Boston fans that he wanted to be there long term. He goes to Brooklyn. And while in Brooklyn, whether it's because of the vaccine, whether it's because of the documentary that he retweeted that was anti-Semitic, whatever it is, Kyrie Irving has missed 48% of his games while he's been a member of the Brooklyn Nets. And when I look about the Brooklyn Nets overall and their totality with Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant as teammates over the last four seasons, this includes the playoffs, they played in 87 games. Their record was 53 and 34. They had two playoff appearances. They were six and seven in the playoffs, including this previous year in the playoffs where they got completely swept by the Boston Celtics and Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant only won one playoff series. One playoff series between Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant? They completely underachieved as a duo. Seriously. I expected big things from Kyrie and Kevin Durant when they teamed up to play together in Brooklyn. And the duo won one playoff series. And in the playoffs, they went six and seven. Now, that one year when it was James Harden, who was also a part of this duo in Brooklyn, they had a trio of James Harden, Kyrie Irving, and Kevin Durant. That season, Kyrie got injured against Giannis in the Milwaukee Bucks. And James Harden was also injured. He was dealing with a hamstring injury at the time. They got beat in the second round of that series against Giannis and Middleton. And the Bucs went on to win the NBA Finals. But to go six and seven over four seasons as a dynamic duo is a complete failure. And honestly, when I think about 
Kyrie, James Harden, and Kevin Durant as a trio, they all failed as a trio. And they definitely, definitely did not live up to expectations. Because when I th thought about Kyrie, Harden, and KD, I'm thinking they're going to be unstoppable offensively. These are three of the most skilled offensive players in NBA history. How can you stop KD, Kyrie, and James Harden? It's impossible. And they won one playoff series. So obviously James Harden won it out the next year. He departs Brooklyn for Philly. They bring in Ben Simmons, and Ben Simmons has not been the same Ben Simmons in Brooklyn compared to what he was in Philly. So, again, I believe Kyrie and KD both failed as a dynamic duo in Brooklyn. It was a dysfunctional organization in Brooklyn overall. And I believe that Sean Marks, the general manager for the Nets, and the owner, Joe Sy, they were ready to just cut ties with Kyrie. And it was reports that Joe Sy, he didn't even want to trade Kyrie to the Lakers. The Lakers were having conversations with the Nets, so are the Suns as well, about trading for Kyrie Irving. And we know Kyrie Irving wanted to go to Los Angeles and play with LeBron and Anthony Davis. And if they would have been able to pull that off, I believe the Lakers would have been the favorites in the Western Conference with Kyrie, with LeBron, and with the healthy Anthony Davis. But Josiah didn't want to trade Kyrie to the Lakers. And this is because of how Kyrie conducted himself while he was a member of the Brooklyn Nets. And it was mainly just because of his inability to be available. Kyrie Irving is a tremendous person off the floor. Tremendous. Like Kyrie Irving, he donates to charity and he has no problem giving back to his community. He's a great, great brother in the African-American community. He really, really is. He is not this terrible person that the media tries to give this bad perception of. That's not who Kyrie Irving is. Kyrie Irving is a good brother. He really, really is. From a brother to another, Kyrie Irving is a good brother. Don't let the media fool y'all. The problem with Kyrie Irving is his inability to be available. These owners of these teams, they don't want to pay you all this money and invest in you if they don't know if you're going to be available on a night in and night out basis to play basketball. You got one job, bro. One job. Now, again, I had no issues with Kyrie Irving sitting out because of the vaccine. I think that's something that should be a choice on taking the vaccine. I think the vaccine mandate was ridiculous. I've been consistent with that thought process. But the whole anti-Semitic video when he was out for that, I didn't like that suspension either. But he had a bunch of issues even before all of that took place with the vaccine and the anti-Semitic video. But you you gotta you got to play and be available. And the thing for Kyrie Irving is, I think now that he's going to be in Dallas with Luka Doncic, this is Luka Doncic's basketball team. So Luka Doncic is the number one player on this team. It's his team. Kyrie Irving is a perfect number two on a championship contender. He can't be a number one because he's not a great leader. We found that out when he went to Boston when he played with a young Tatum and young Brown. But he could be a tremendous number two on your team. And I think in the short term, he's going to help the Dallas Mavericks contend for a championship this year. Now, in the West, you got the Denver Nuggets with Murray, with Joker, okay? We also got in the Western Conference, the Clippers with Paul George, with Kawhi Leonard. We know Steph is going to return back to the court at some point for the Warriors, the defending NBA champions. And then you still got the Memphis Grizzlies, despite their struggles recently. They got John Morant. They got Desmond Bain. They got Jackson, okay? So the Western Conference, 
with the addition of Kyrie Irving now in the mix, it's a loaded Western Conference. It really, really is. Like the West, <laughs> you look at the Western Conference, it is loaded out West. Now, I think the best team in the NBA right now is the Boston Celtics with Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. They are the defending Eastern Conference champions for a reason, and they've been playing some good basketball in the first half of the season. But looking at the West right now, the Nuggets are number one. The Grizzlies are number two, despite their struggles recently. The Kings are the number three seed. Clippers, number four. The Suns, they've been inconsistent all season long. At some point, Devin Booker is going to return back to the floor if he stays healthy. Too is he willing to defer to Luka? The West is loaded. Yes. Yes, that's that's Sharif. I'm on sports talk. My man Sharif, what's up, bro? Yeah, he got yeah, if he stays healthy, I think offensively, the Mavericks will have zero issues at scoring the basketball. Zero. But losing Dorian Finney Smith, it's going to hurt them defensively. It really, really is. But I I'm 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 excited to see Kyrie Irving and Luca play together as teammates in Dallas. And I want to see if the Mavericks sign Kyrie Irving to a long-term contract after the season because that's the biggest question now. This is, this is really an experiment for the Mavericks. Jason Kidd, Mark Cuban, this is an experiment for them because if they don't like the way it goes, they can easily allow Kyrie Irving to walk at the end of the season. They don't have to pay him. So if it goes bad, they can allow him to walk. If it goes good, they can maybe negotiate a short-term contract. Because if I'm a basketball team and I'm an owner or a general manager, I'm not giving Kyrie Irving a long-term extension. I'm not going to do it. I will pay Kyrie Irving on a year-to-year -year basis. I, I don't care if it's $50 million for one year. I will pay Kyrie Irving that. Because Kyrie Irving has to prove to me that he's going to be available night in and night out. Your best ability is availability. And he's going to have to prove to me that he's going to be available before I give him a long-term contract. Everybody go and follow Wise Guys on Twitter at WiseGuys underscore away. It's also on Facebook, Wise, Wise Guys. And be sure to follow Wise Guys on Instagram at These Guys Know Sports. For the break, I'm going to discuss the Super Bowl matchup between the Chiefs and the Eagles. I'll be right back.